Blocks are great tools that help you repeat line work multiple times. Now, they also help you to use standard designs all of the time. Now, there's another type of block that provides a lot more flexibility, and they're called dynamic blocks. As their name implies, dynamic blocks have the ability to change. Now, this essentially gives you multiple blocks in one. So let's take a look at one of the block resources that come with AutoCAD, and that's in your tool palettes. To open your tool palettes, just press Control and 3 at the same time. Now, your tool palette may not look exactly like mine. It may be shaped differently. It may be docked on the sides or something like that. It may even look like this. If so, you can just click on the little button here on the bar. That's the auto hide. Now, you're also going to realize that there are a lot of different tabs that you can click on. Now, each one of these tabs will get you to a different set of things. A lot of the tool palettes will have blocks in them, like this civil tab it has a lot of blocks that you'll use in civil design. And if you click on this little bottom part right here, that looks like a bunch of tabs stacked up on top of each other, that will give you access to all the other tabs that are in AutoCAD. You can customize palettes and things like that. But right now, I just want to look at the mechanical tab right here. So find the mechanical tab and click on it. Now in here, you'll find a lot of different blocks. And in this one palette, you have mechanical engineering based blocks. So a lot of these are bolts and weld symbols and anchors, things like that. And they have two different sets of them in here, imperial samples, meaning feet and inches, and metric samples, which are in centimeters, millimeters, things like that. And you can see most of the same blocks are here in each side with a few exceptions here or there. And the same can be said for the electrical tab, civil tab, and the architectural tab. So if we go to the mechanical tab, and I'm not particular to which one you pick, it doesn't really matter if you want to go imperial or metric, I just want to show you what they kind of look like. So when you click a regular block from your tool palette, just click on it, and then you click somewhere on your screen, and then you'll be able to enter in your information, and that is your block. So you can see here, I've put in this valve, and it's an attributed block. So if I double click on the block, I can put in some field information. Well, dynamic blocks can also be attributed blocks as well. They just have to be set up that way. Let's erase this to get rid of it. You know a block is dynamic or not if it has this little lightning bolt on it. See, this valve block didn't, so it's not a dynamic block. It's just a regular standard block. Now, another way to get a block in your drawing is to use the insert command. Just type insert on your command line, press enter, and then you can browse for any of the blocks that you have inside your file, or you can browse to them, click on the browse button, and go and find a block or a CAD file, and you can insert it into your drawing. So that's how you get a block or dynamic block into your current file. Well, once you get a block in there, I'm just going to pick this hex head bolt imperial. And if you prefer, you can use the metric one. It'll be fine for this demonstration. You can see it looks like just a regular block. Now, if you select the block, you'll see these little grip arrows. Regular blocks, so if I insert this valve again, won't have those grip arrows. So if I click here, it has the standard insertion grip for a block. If you click on that, you can move the block around. That's the same way with a dynamic block. But the difference in the dynamic block is that it has these little grip arrows. And different blocks will have different types of grips. In this case, when you see an arrow, that usually means it's going to be a stretch. So you click it and you stretch, and that's making the block bigger. If I click here, you can see all these little lines, these little tick marks. As I move the mouse up and down, it's adjusting the width or the diameter of this bolt. You can see the numeric value that's inside there. I can also type in a value, and it'll go to that. Or I can just move it very quickly up and down until it gets to the size I want. Now this block grip here will just change the length of it set to these increments. Now, not every dynamic block has the exact same type of settings. This shoulder screw, which is very similar, is just that. It's a block of a shoulder screw. See, here's the head, and here's the shoulder, and then the threaded area. If I click on it, you see I have the same stretching option here as I did on the other block, but I have these two other arrows here. Now, these are lists. This changes to the different type of shoulder screws. You can see the line work changes accordingly. And this one here gives me a list of all sorts of different sizes. Whatever type you need in this block specifically, you just click it, pull down the list, and it's there. Now, other dynamic blocks will do different things as well. This roller bearing, it's just a cross-section of a roller bearing. 
If I select it, I have different options for different types or different sizes. That's all it is. It just changes to the way it looks. Very simple. I don't have to recreate it. I don't have to keep or manage all of these different types of blocks inside my file. Now, another great thing about it is that if the design criteria changes, it makes it very quick and very easy to adjust my drawings accordingly. You say, oh, you know what? We don't need the R20. We need to bump down a little bit to the R18. Okay, done. It's very quick and very easy to do. If we look at the architectural tab, and if we look at the door, I click it here, I insert it, it looks like a door, and it has a lot of different grips on it. Here I have, again, the stretch command so that I can quickly change the door size. This will set the direction of the swing. This one flips it from side to side. It's my move or adjustment. I can change the wall width. Or here I can change how much the door is opened. Maybe it's just closed, open at 90 degrees, 45 degrees, etc. And regardless of where it's opened at or which side it's on, all these work together. So dynamic blocks, as you can see, are very versatile and they make things very easy to work with and very quick to do. You just have to set them up ahead of time or download them from somewhere, some resource, whichever one it is. But once you get them in your drawing, you'll be able to work with them and do a lot with them very quickly.